be seated and if you would open your hearts and your minds to all that God has given you as we invite the Holy Spirit to bless this word. Let us pray. Almighty and loving one, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the risen Christ that meets us this day, greets us with peace, and invites us into holy conversation, into sacred moments of our lives, that we too might see Jesus standing amongst us this day. And so, O oh God, as we come into this house of worship, as we pray and as we sing, as we open our hearts, may we hear your voice speaking now that we might be hearers and doers of your word. And now, God, I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day. And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. So we begin a new sermon series here at Cathedral of Hope this day as we spend the next few weeks thinking about this God that is still speaking. Uh, This God who is still speaking to those who were witnesses to the resurrection of Jesus and those who are bearing testimony to the good news of Christ this day. The God who is still speaking. I do not believe that the last word of God evaporated into the atmosphere at the final dot of the book of Revelation. I believe that this God who inspired the word that we call the Holy Bible, this God who is with us, is a God who is still speaking. And a God who, through the revelation of our lives, enables people not only to hear the good news, but to receive the good news. Indeed, this resurrected experience of God in Jesus is an opportunity for those and for us to claim the reality of a transformed life, to claim the reality of lives that are empowered to do God's work in the world today. And you and I, as followers of Jesus, are called into that compassionate, loving kindness with one another in those acts of justice, in those acts of praise, in those acts of proclamation. You and I are encouraged to enable the world to hear the good news. God is still speaking. How many of us believe that this day? God is still speaking. Can I get an amen? God is still speaking. And God moves in mysterious and wonderful ways. God was still speaking to the disciples following that resurrection experience. And it reminds me as I come to this post-resurrected season, it reminds me that this one they called Thomas was not unlike many of us. This one that we call Thomas, this one who has got this new nickname, Doubting Thomas, is a a Thomas who, in in all senses of the world, was perhaps very much like us. A God or, or a Thomas who doubted this experience of the resurrection and just needed some evidence, just needed some proof that, that this Jesus who said would be risen from the dead was truly risen from the dead. Doubting Thomas. Chris uh, told us in staff meeting just a a few weeks ago that on Tuesday mornings he listens to a podcast and the the person who was uh, preaching that morning was talking about Doubting Thomas. And he was disappointed that this one that they called Doubting Thomas uh, suddenly had this nickname because of one thing he did in his life. That that prior to this doubting Thomas experience, prior to that experience, Thomas was just like all of the other disciples. He had followed Jesus, lived with Jesus, indeed had been sent out just like all of the other disciples to heal the sick and two by two to be reminded of that sense of good news. And yet we forget all about the experiences of Thomas. We, we focus only on this one experience when Jesus comes back into that upper room, says, peace be with you, and invites Thomas to place his hands in the nail prints where Jesus would have hung just a while ago. I think many of us live with nicknames I believe that many of us, when we have done something in our lives, are usually labeled by that one thing. 
rather than remembering that our lives are a continuum and God is still speaking and God is still working and God is still healing and God is still restoring us to our full of resurrection. We judge so often one another just on one instance of our lives, just like Doubting Thomas. But if the truth be known, each and every one of us is a work in progress. That each and every one of us is being transformed, as the Apostle Paul would say, in the twinkling of an eye into a new creation, a new being. God is still speaking. And on this day, we, we invite ourselves to believe that God is still speaking through us, God is still speaking through you and you and you and you, that God is still showing up and the evidence of a risen Christ is still present with us when we allow ourselves to live in the focus of Christ. God is still speaking through you. I lose count of the number of times that I have been in conversation with people over the years when I have known without a shadow of a doubt that something that someone has said to me has been made perfectly purposeful for me. In those moments of conversation, perhaps even I was praying for a sign from God or asking God to give me some clarity about where I should be going or what I should be doing, and that through conversations with people, I have heard the voice of God. Now, many of you have said that you hear that through people like, like, like me and, and Reverend Aaron and, and Reverend Michael and Minister Winner Laws and, and those of us who are called to this particular role of being pastors. I don't believe that God speaks any more powerfully through people like us than God speaks through you. I believe that God speaks through every one of us as we allow our lives to be in that presence of a God who, who comes to us this day and says, would you but just believe? Would you just believe? Would you just believe? This, this God that, that we experience, this God that we worship, is not just a God of the ancient times, but a God of the present moment, and speaks through you and me when we allow our lives to speak the truth of God. When we allow ourselves to believe, like the Hebrew Scriptures said to us in the book of Jeremiah, I knit you together in your mother's womb. I knew you even before you were born. And I lay my hands upon you that you might speak truth in my name, that you might speak truth into the world, that, that you might speak truth to power, to injustice, to all of the isms that we find in our world today, that you might lift your voice in the adoration of this God who in Jesus Christ gave us a revelation of God's love and God's compassion. And I believe that the one way in which we know if God is speaking today if God is speaking through you and me, is the God who encourages us to speak that word of love and grace to one another. I've said this before, and in a world today where we are so divided, I truly believe that if your religion teaches you to hate, then you should find a new religion. That the way in which we know that God is still speaking is when the extraordinary things arise out of extraordinary or perhaps ordinary people like you and me. That this God who knit us together in our mother's womb, this God who has laid hands on us, this God who has spoken to us in baptism, this God that is speaking to us this day is encouraging us to help others believe that this God has not abandoned us, but that this God is truly with us, in all of us. Not, not one of us is left behind, not one of us is left out, if we would but just believe this day that somehow this God who spoke to Thomas, this God who spoke to Jeremiah, this God who has spoken through the prophets and through the disciples and through people of our past that we uphold as saints, is speaking through you, 
is encouraging you to speak your truth, to speak your love, and to speak it in ways that others might be lifted up as well. It always amazes me that we would attribute God's voice to others without thinking that God might be speaking through us. How many of you have had that experience when you have sat in conversation with one another that suddenly you have heard the voice of God? Now, you might not have labeled it the voice of God because people then think we're crazy. What do you mean you hear voices? (laughs) But there is no doubt in my world and in my life that God has used you to speak to me, and I pray that God has used me to speak to you. That this God is still present. This God is still speaking. This God is encouraging us to speak out and to speak out against all of the injustices of our world, to speak out against the way in which the church treats people, to speak out in ways that will lift people up and find their salvation, find their hope in God. And when we are silent, the psalmist reminds us that if we remain, remain silent, then the, the stones would begin to speak praise to our God because God wants to still speak. God still wants God's presence to be known in the world. Just before coming down this morning, I was on Facebook, my last Facebook post for a few hours so that I can uh, withdraw just for a few minutes. And on Facebook this morning, there was a, uh, a news report from the BBC in Great Britain. And as I looked on that screen, I, I saw the, the face of someone that I know personally very, very well. Jenny Donovan is a member of my congregation back in Bournemouth, England, when I was 23 years of age. And she had just been featured on the BBC because she is a, a chiropodist. She's a, a, I think you call that a, pot- a podiatrist. Somebody help me out here this morning. <laughs> someone who works with feet. We call it a podiatrist, thank you, thank you. We call them chiropodists. It's a much, much nicer word, I think. But anyway, um, and, um, and, and she was retired. She's been a chiropodist or a podiatrist all of her life. And she was being featured on the BBC because she was using her gift, a gift and a skill that she has had all of her life. She was using this gift to clean the feet and to do the nails of those who are homeless in our community. And she was uh, recorded on the, on the news channel. She was outside on the street, and she'd set up a bowl of hot water, and people were just able to come, homeless folks who were just able to come and to have their feet massaged, and then you could see her chopping away at them. God is still speaking. God is still speaking. I believe that God is still speaking to those who are less fortunate than ourselves when we do an act of kindness for one another. It doesn't have to be through prophetic words. It can be through the general actions of our lives. God is still speaking. God is still encouraging us to use the gifts of our lives to make a difference in the world. When I was first ordained, it was that same woman who sat down with me at a coffee shop, and she said to me, Neil, she said, I've watched you. I I perhaps should put this in a context. Uh, She used to babysit for me when I was a tiny little baby for my mother, and she had grown, and I I had lost touch with her, and and we came back together through through the church, but, but she sat with me. She said, I've known you. She said, I've wiped your butt. (laughs) You don't want to hear that sometimes. She said, I have seen you grow in in, in numerous different ways. She said, and now you have this degree. She said, and I just invite you to be conscious that every time you walk into the pulpit, you would remind yourself, kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. (laughs) 
She said, you could use all of the grandiose language that you've learned and all of the deep theological understandings that you've learned, but I invite you to be reminded always to keep it simple, that God is still speaking and that God speaks to our hearts and to our minds and often speaks through you and me to transform the world. I invite you as we begin this post-resurrection series, this post-resurrection experience of our God, that like Thomas, we might allow our belief to speak its truth. That our knowing of the Holy Spirit that lives within our lives, that we might encourage that still small voice within us to speak out to the world and to speak words of affirmation and love to one another, to speak words of justice and peace and common goodness, to speak words that will confront the systems of racism and phobias and xenophobias and all that divides us, that we would speak the Word of God to all of those places so that the voice that we believe spoke to Thomas, the voice that spoke to Jeremiah, the voice that spoke through the prophets would speak through us this day. God is still speaking through you. I I pray that you will believe that. I pray that you will embrace that. And I will pray for each of us that we will use our voice to the voice of God and bring wholeness to our world. May God bless us as we allow God to speak through you in Jesus' name. God bless you, Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ. Amen.